frequently said, you should be a librarian. In fact, you can imagine librarian work is quite very active, eager to do a lot of activity, and requiring a lot of skill and training to becoming a librarian. This is really a misunderstanding, and that's why with this minimum standard, we help them to at least set up the selection criteria for the teacher to becoming a librarian, and also treating librarian as a teaching staff. Because in the community education, they divide teaching and non-teaching staff. Teaching staff, you are entitled to so many things. Privilege, you know, additional teaching hour and this and that. But non-teaching staff, you only receive pure salary, growth. If pure salary, not other incentive. And that's why no one wants to, want to be a librarian. And they say librarian is a boring job. But in fact, librarian is a lot of things need to do it. So that's why we, with this library, we train the librarian how to doing a lot of reading activity to make sure library becoming attractive place for children, not a boring, not a, a place to store books. The second program is community participation and awareness raising. Because like, I really don't know about Thailand context. But in Cambodian context, this is a crucial step because besides school, parents also have the uh, uh, role to pull and push. And they often ignoring their children. They don't encourage children to read. You know, for them, if children read, you must read accurately. But if you ask parents to help, they will knock them and say, you go read your own. And that's what we're trying to make changing. Though this program is to raise parent awareness and community awareness about the importance of reading, the importance of added value of education, increasing participation parents, and creating an enabling environment for their children. Because sometimes parents, you know, when they came home, they don't even ask their children. They just turn on the TV, watch it. They, where is the environment for children to read? And that's what this program is about. So the activity here, we make a community contribution. So wherever we go to set up the library, we mobilize community participation. You need to contribute. Either fund, either money, either in kind to, to help establish the library. When we're building the library for the children. So the community contribution is a concept to initiate that build ownership, promoting village responsibility in education development and education for their own children. Maintaining and building the encouraging children to read. So we engage them. So you see here, so far, you know, people say oh, it's difficult to engage community because they are poor, they don't have money, but in fact, no. As long as you make them understanding, you can easily engage them. You see, all this place is built by the community, not by us, for children to read. And they came regularly to the meeting, to the meeting to see how much fun is needed. Although they are poor, but they can still. You know, building a library, building a standalone library building, they need to contribute it around $1,500 with, with us, matching fun. We pay 85%, they pay, one, they pay 15%, either in kind or cash. They did. They did. The community leader, some of them, since they understanding the importance of education, they contribute. I remember this year, we went to a community and we say, okay, we need, and they say, okay, no, we have money, but we want to build something in the pagoda. We say, look, yeah, you build in the pagoda. Thanks for this kind, but what do you expect? Are you expecting to have the engineering? You expect to have medical doctor? You have to expect to have the uh, teacher. Where can you have all this? Only from the temple or from education? What is your problem? Your problem is, is because of poor education and you're expecting to reborn with the new lives. And if it's without school, you will end up with poor, with, with poor again, isn't it? No, with all this kind of awareness raising, they change their mind. They're donating money to us. They donate money to us. So you see, sometimes we, don't, we cannot meet them at, at daytime because they are busy, they are farmers. 
So what we did, we tried to go even at night, but not myself, my, my, not my colleague alone. We in collaboration with the uh, local authority, with the villagers to organizing this. So make sure, sometimes the, pa the parent, the, the father is not there. They're only sending the mother to school. But the father, they're playing vital role in push and pulls. And that's why we're trying, sometimes we're trying to doing this awareness raising even at night time. So this is the teacher and she is the village leader. So both conducting this awareness raising. So we also invited mother to see their children in school. So to find out what they have learned and awareness to promoting. We invited them to come to school to see. Because so far they're seeing education is the job of the teacher. Not, not parents. Not parents' role. Education is reading is the job of the teacher. They have no, nothing to do with education. And that's why we're trying to change this mindset by bringing them to school to see what their children are doing and what the school is doing. And another program which is we have here, it's a reading promotion, which is this activity is done a lot. The objective of this the, uh, program is to improve literacy level at the country population, promote children reading, enjoy of reading, and gradually gain the habit of reading. So the activity is here, we put it here, is including set up mobile library. This mobile library, it was done it in a way because the reason we set up this mobile library because in the rural remote areas, sometimes it's very difficult to access. And sometimes, it, 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 even in urban area, some place you can, it's difficult to set up. There was no school. And children was left at homes. Parents go to work. And that's why we set up this mobile library so they can go from one community to one to another. So you see, this is the mobile library. Actually, we have only, not only the car, we convert, they converting the vans to becoming mobile library and also have motorbikes to be a library. So a mobile library, it's, it's with the motorbike, with the uh, car, with the, uh, like a tuk-tuk. You know, they will travel around the community to uh, uh, make sure children access the book. Even here at the countryside, this is the, uh, from uh, SBA. Because during the harvest time, parents took their children to the rice field. And that's where this uh, library and uh, uh, mobile teams, they're trying to doing a lot of read story reading. So we also, during the um, school vacation times, children stay at home. It was a long vacation. It's a two and a half month. So what we did, we tried to have the um, local, the community leader to take the book from the library at the school nearby and then drop at the student homes. So students will help to monitor recording the who has borrowed the book. In one week, we bring in the new book and then take out the old book to another place. This keep moving from one place to another. And we also encouraging children to read for their own community. This girl, you know, when she was, she was the, uh, uh, she's now at grade four, she read all the books in the library and she becoming outstanding. So far, she is the bottom on the class and her grandmother want to stop her. But today, they were so proud to see her, see her reading fluently. And this is a really a good experience because in the countryside, in the community, parents always say, is it their excuse? They say, no, children don't like to read. They always say, we ask them, can you buy a book for your children? No, children don't like to read. But in fact, it's not true. Children enjoy a lot of reading if you have the, uh, quite a good material and highly relevant. To them. Sorry. So this is the uh, reading activity, storytelling we conducted to make sure, sometimes we're supporting the teacher to conduct storytelling. So they came out making, instead of stress in the classroom, you came out doing story readings. This is story contest, reading contest. And we also work in the uh, uh, children uh, book exhibition at the orphan center. So we try all the means, what we can, to promoting readings. 
even here, we also trying to doing establish the resource centers. At the community, they we also establish a resource center in different places. We trying to pilot like here, our partner they establish at the hospital. So trying to get a corners at the hospital. Another thing we are trying to do is the uh, uh, promote story readings is radio program. We are doing radio program broadcasting. So this radio program it will airing twice a week. It's a series story reading. Mostly it, it's done by the student, by the children. So we invite the children to the studio and they live, they're doing story reading. We have seen that, you know, this is much more efficient because sometimes when children themselves, they read, they were so proud and they can share the story and they're also enjoying listening too. Last thing, which is I'm trying to group it here, is to improve children's reading skill. Like, like, I, like I'm saying, you will not enjoy reading if you, have, if you don't have reading skill. You enjoy reading unless you have reading skill. So you see here, the program here is to make sure improve student grade appropriate reading and writing skill, improve teacher understanding in development of reading and writing skill in young children, and use variety of approach to support student, liter student literacy learning in the classroom, motivate children reading and developing lifelong habit, lifelong habit of reading. This is a really essential component, and I integrating this into as part of reading promotion because, like I'm saying, without skill, you are not motivating to read. You begin to enjoy reading unless you have skill to read. Yeah. So as you're seeing, I want to quote it, the literacy skill and habit of reading reinforce one another. A child who reads more will read better, and a child who reads better will read more. And that's why we need to put this in the, the skill into to here. So the activity here, we're doing publishing the local language book. Like I'm saying, there was no children's book in Cambodia. People say it's not true if I'm saying that. My colleague, my Cambodian colleague, they will say, especially the Ministry of Education, they will say, you are exaggerate. It's not true. But why I'm still saying that? Because, you know, the book they publish, they do not take into consideration children's age, skill, in understanding how children learn to read. The book, there was no progressive. You know, the way you structure the book for the early grade reader, it had to be appropriate. Using frequently word progression, all this, it, it, it had to be there. Not the book for the fluent reader. How come the early grade reader enjoying reading? How are they going to improve? And that's what i saying. There was no children's book, especially for early grade, grade reader published in Cambodia. So what Don't Read is doing, each year we're producing around 25 to 30 new titles. We print it and distribute it to school. So this is the uh, local language published by Room to Read. Room to Read is the uh, only NGO who doing a lot of publishing uh, so far. Room to Read, uh, SIPA, we do a lot, but Room to Read is 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 quite. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to sell Room to Read, but uh, it was quite big NGO, international NGO who really uh, have. Uh, uh, putting strong effort in promoting readings. We also doing, like I'm saying, the entire generation is lost. What we're trying to do, it's not only producing the books for children to read, but also build it, the young emerge writer and illustrator. We train them how to write the book because None of them can survive from, from publishing, from uh, selling books. Eh? But we try to encourage them step by step. Train this young image, young writer, illustrator, who really have motivated gradually to expand the uh, publication, the uh, market. So we do training this young writer, illustrator. Secondly, we also produce supplementary teaching material. 
like I'm saying, teacher rely on a single textbook. So to promoting reading, be producing supplementary teaching, uh, um, a, uh, uh, sub producing supplementary teaching materials. So this is including, you see, we producing the uh, storybooks. Supplementary is including the uh, worksheets, the uh, letter cards, storybooks, simple black and white storybooks. This is the uh, consonant vowel. Yeah. To make sure they have variety of reading material to push it towards the uh, promoting readings. One more thing is teacher, teacher capacity building. Like I'm saying early, you know, some of them are not even completing primary school. When I make presentation, I say, we teach teacher how to teach reading. People are laughing at me. Because they say, teacher is supposed to teach reading, isn't it? But in fact, those teachers, they don't have skill to teach reading. Mostly, they, they write and then let children copy and repeat it. There was no interactive, no how to encouraging, how to engaging children. And that's why what we're trying to do here is to, like I'm saying, all those more than half of primary school teachers are professional trained teachers, but their capacity and skill are teaching reading is remain a concern. To fill the gaps, Room 3 provides in-service teacher professional development to improve teacher skill in teaching and reading and understand the development of reading and writing of young children. They don't. Eh? So I think I'm going to almost to the end of my presentation. So we were seeing this is the capacity building we provide to the teachers, yeah, and how to do reading.